Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coimbra University and to the first forum on LGBTQI plus aging in Southern Europe. Um, we'll just give a couple of seconds for everybody to get settled. It's so wonderful to see so many friendly faces and faces I don't know yet. Um, okay. According to official data from the European Commission, 94 million people in Europe are now over 60 years old, which means one-fifth of the European population. A conservative estimation points to at least 10% of these 94 million being older lesbians, gay men, bisexual, trans, intersex, and other sexual and gender dissidents. We are in the most inclusive sense of the word. The journey of those who came before us and whose memories we want to honor and to celebrate in the next couple of days was not necessarily easy. Many faced the cruelty of criminalization, the estrangement caused by the AIDS crisis, the loss of friends, family and loved ones because of prejudice, because of ignorance and other forms of violence. Many were left to their own devices in the absence of cultural references, activist organizations, and networks of care. For many, if not all, the simple act of reaching old age as an LGBTQI plus person has been, in itself, a victory against all odds. And this statement should make democratic societies shiver now, the idea of surviving old age as a um, victory is violent, especially under the current wave of anti-gender and anti-LGBTI populism that sweeps across the globe with more or less intensity. Who protects older queers from the threats posed by the extreme right? Who cares? Who is listening? But the same idea of surviving old age as a queer person can also be empowering and even hopeful. We're here, we're queer, we're staying. <laughs> now, this tension between loss and pride, pain and joy, past and present, is at the core of what brings us together in this event, a joint endeavor of the research projects Remember and Trace both of which I have the pleasure and responsibility to coordinate with the support of an amazing team of colleagues at the Center for Social Studies. You will meet them all if you haven't, okay. But this event would not have been possible without the support of our partners, represented also in this opening session, to whom I want to express my gratitude. Gathering participants from, from so many uh, different countries and different backgrounds, we are certain that this forum on LGBTQI aging in Southern Europe will be the first of many, and that the seeds spread in multiple sessions, cultural events, coffee breaks, and even other spaces of uh, socializing and networking will grow into something larger and undeniable. Queer old is queer gold. We need to hold on to the embodied knowledge that comes with experience over the life course. Let us be seen, let us be heard, and may our work today make justice to our queer oldies and influence those who have the power to decide on adequate social policies that will make our societies inclusive and safer for all. Thank you. And I now uh, pass the floor to Professor Alberto Figueiredo, Director of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. Good morning, dear Director of the Center for Social Studies of the University of Lima, colleague Professor Tiago Santos Pereira, dear organizers and members of the scientific committee of this first international forum, namely the Dr. Ana Cristina Santos, dear Dr. Miguel Cardina, Dear Dr. Silvia Mieso, dear Rafaela Esteves, dear colleagues, professors, researchers, and participants, dear students. 
As Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at the University of Puma, it is with great pleasure that I greet you and welcome you. It is an honor to have you here with us. At the opening of this international conference, I would like to make only two very brief remarks. First, we are very pleased with the fact that this event is taking place here at Coimbra and in our faculty. I therefore wish to thank the organizing committee and to all the supporters for bringing about this important meeting in which research, knowledge and critical thinking at center stage. Mm -hmm. Second, I sincerely hope you enjoy excellent and productive sessions of debate and networking over these two days. The Faculty of Arts and Humanities of Coimbra is also increasingly open to internationalization and that is the path that we all want to continue to walk. So, I renew my compliments, have an excellent conference, thank you very much, muito obrigado. Good morning to you all. Uh, it's really a pleasure to welcome all of you in Coimbra and the Center for Social Studies at the University of Coimbra to discuss multiple issues on the experiences of our LGBTQI plus Asian in Southern Europe. Uh, I'd like to start by giving my colleagues uh, the end of the next session, Professor Alvin Figueiredo, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, where all the primary sessions are held. The, the parallel sessions will really be held at the Center for Social Studies. We have also the opportunity to, to visit uh, uh, our uh, uh, institutes. Also, to greet all my colleagues here in the table, Alexander Assange, Maria Cardina, and Father Stiers, and, and, uh, and uh, Silvia Mayer. And I believe Squidward and CES are a particularly relevant place to have these discussions. In fact, CES' approach to research guarantees a focus on research excellence on contemporary issues from critical stands. Firstly, we adopt inter- and transdisciplinary approaches to better address highly complex multidimensional topics in our areas of research. We undertake a deep analysis of society through, through critical and political epistemologies. And we strive to overcome Eurocentric standpoints by strengthening relations with the global south and within also the, the European context in particular. Our research advances a critical understanding of Europe, including, including on its governance mechanisms, from the Senate periphery. <coughs> is also uh, a version of European Senate. Finally, SESH seeks to contribute to developing sustainable democratic societies to deal with ongoing ecological, economic, and political crises and inequalities attached to their impacts. This has been clearly presented to the International Evaluating Panel from Ongoing Assessment of Research Units in Portugal, which is led by the Portuguese Research Council like agency, the Foundation for Science and Technology. Well, I would also like to acknowledge for the continued support to SESH. And as, as we highlighted to the panel, SESH has a long research tradition on the analysis of gender and sexualities based on equalities and that pervades influence in our societies, which continues expanding into, into new domains. The democracy, justice, and human rights method line, the uh, CDMI as you, uh, uh, represents for as a coordinator, the GPS sexualities working group in the following year are primary locus uh, of this research and work led by Eric Stine and these two consecutive ERC events, uh, intimate previously to, to, to the ongoing choice project, has foregrounded a novel research agenda on intimate citizenship and LGBT uh, issues in dialogue both with the wider historical impact of the long period of authoritarian rule and the dictatorship, which not only controlled the political system but also social values and practices and individual identity. And I think you remember the project departs precisely from that uh, uh, historical uh, uh, important uh, mark in Portuguese history. But also looks forward into the current demographic, demographic changes in an aging society. I would also like to add just that this research also feeds in particular to, to, into doctoral programs in feminist studies, in partnership with the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, and in human rights in contemporary societies. We do the disciplinary research institute at the University of Greenland that leaves some students from the program that are here. That's also getting you. And finally, I'd like to thank the effort, dedication, and care from the research team at SERG that have involved in the organization of the forum, uh, in addition to Anne Stina, uh, Ana Lucia Santos, Ian Massa, Joana Brilhantes, Mario Pieri, Pablo Pérez Navarro, Paco Chalquivis, Pedro Fidalgo, and also at the events and communication team, namely Alexandre Pré and Nes Costa, who was outside. 
And of course, I wish your president to stay here in the movement and the productive work and discussions about this couple of days. Thank you. Good morning, dear organizers, dear colleagues, dear students, dear activists. In the name of the Center for Social Studies commemoration of the 50 years of the Carnation Revolution, I would like to welcome you all to this first international forum, LGBTQI, who is aging in sovereign Europe. It is a great pleasure and a great privilege to receive you in Coimbra during these two days. As you may know, Portugal was ruled by a dictatorial and colonial regime until 1974. The Carnation Revolution marked the nature of the country's democracy. Approved in April 76, the Constitution proclaimed that, and I quote, Portugal is a sovereign republic based on the dignity of the human person and the will of the people and committed to build a free, just and solidary society. End of quote. Much has been done to ensure this dignity and recognition to all people. But much remains to be done and universities and research research centers as a role, a central role on that. The work of Anna Cristina Santos and the Trace and Remember project teams is one of the clearest examples of such scientific mission to foster and engage knowledge based in innovative epistemologies and methodologies and able to bring visibility to social groups and experiences under discrimination and exclusion. I am sure that this conference will be a stimulating place to strengthen academic networks and to create significant knowledge. It is very much with this in mind that I would like again to wish you all good work and a pleasant stay during these <coughs> two days or maybe more days <coughs> in, uh, I hope also, sunny winter. <laughs> Welcome to, to Coimbra, to the University and to the Center for Social Studies. So I'm here uh, as part of the coordination of the thematic life of democracy, justice and human rights that hosts, among other projects, the Trace and the Remember project. This thematic line is coordinated also by, of course, my esteemed colleague Ana Cristina Santos and uh, also Daniela Nascimento. So uh, I, want, I, I, uh, I also want to give this presentation to encourage you maybe to apply for you know, being visiting researcher or visiting PhD researcher or activist and to join us uh, here at, at SED. So as all thematic lines along with research, teaching and outreach activities are organized at SED, the Democra Democracy, Justice and Human Rights Group gathered research from diverse disciplinary backgrounds mostly, for instance, political sociology, sociology of law, gender studies, international relations and peace studies, literature studies, or political philosophy. And you may ask, so how all these people <laughs> get together and do research? Um, so we get together because we are mostly doing uh, research on the uh, persistence of systems of oppression that are intertwined in the structures of racism, heteropatriarchy, and capitalism or we can sum up as coloniality. Uh, we also examine the uh, uh, socio-legal, socio-political and cultural resistances that in the framework both of the modern state and beyond mark the present of anti-discrimination policies and the constitution of alternative programs of dignity. Just to give you a flavor of some of the current research projects and also those uh, developed in the last years. Uh, so what have been the, the main themes and topics of, of research? And I also encourage you, of course, to, to check the, the website of sales and, and also the thematic line. So research projects have been uh, focused on queer theory and LGBTQI plus rights and, of course, the right to memory. I think it's one of the key issues. Uh, of this conference, uh, biopolitics and queer and gender studies, anti-racism as a politics of liberation, sexual violence and also in particular representations of sexual violence and of rape in literature or in the media, gender equality in higher education, democratic theory and populism. We I think 
uh, had yesterday the news about the elections in Austria. Uh, so I think it's uh, uh, one of the key issues in the, uh, in the current uh, uh, times. You know, so what happened with democracy and <coughs> like populism. Other things, justice, system reforms and corruption, and also international relations, security, and humanitarian intervention. So this is just to give you a hint of, uh, of the kind of research that we develop. And again, welcome here and, and enjoy the conference. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here today as part of this students panel for the opening session of the first uh, forum, the National Forum on LGBTI Plus Aging in Southern Europe. I would also uh, extend the warm welcome uh, to, to you, distinguished speakers, participants, and also students, and guests from around uh, Southern Europe and also beyond. Um, it is truly inspiring to see such a diverse gathering of minds come together um, to address LGBTI plus aging in Southern Europe. So I stand here as a representative of a sexuality research uh, group at the Center for Social uh, Studies, um, which I would like to briefly introduce. Uh, and we are also, as a research group, honored to be part of the organization of this scientific event. Um, GPS, or Sexualities Research Group, was founded in 2021 as a platform that aims to unite uh, researchers, professors, uh, PhD students, and also other um, um, SESH members uh, from the, the community uh, to uh, understand and explore sexualities. Uh, our work um, comes from uh, uh, interdisciplinary approaches, comes from different disciplines, and it covers several topics, such, uh, for example, um, LGBTI rights, sexual citizenship, uh, consensual non-monogamies, uh, based by sexualities, sexual health, uh, amongst uh, others. Um, currently, GPS has uh, 35 members already, and we are actively working um, uh, and we pretend to expand uh, through an extraordinary <coughs> approach we aim to engage even with more uh, researchers from the SESH uh, community. Um, in addition um, to the research conducted uh, by our research members, we are committed to, to raise visibility and impact uh, SESH work in this field, both within academia but also beyond that. Um, so for this we um, collaborate and establish protocols with some institutions, public outreach activities and also science uh, communication. Um, so yeah, each year we publish uh, an annual bulletin called the Factor K, uh, which tries to summarize uh, the comprehensive research that our research members uh, and that uh, each year, so I invite you to to take a look. And yeah, uh, basically is this. Uh, this forum is a space for change, a space to learn from one another, to expand knowledge and imagine a more inclusive future for all. So I did believe that this forum uh, can mark or marks the beginning. Um, marks the beginning of an important journey to consolidate and advance our <coughs> studies and practices uh, on LGBTI uh, aging. And uh, let's make this a moment of connection, learning and hope. I wish you all a very good uh, conference and uh, fruitful uh, discussions. Welcome you all.